بسم الله الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته My name is Yusuf Raza and this is a joint production of Kalima Institute and Islamic Learning Foundation These are the days of Hajj and in these days we commemorate the legacy of Ibrahim عليه السلام and there is no more pertinent a time to commemorate Ibrahim عليه السلام than now a genocide is being telecast live to all of us. We are seeing our brothers and sisters mercilessly massacred. And we feel helpless. What we see before us is the worst depiction of what Athens and Jerusalem had to offer. The Academy speaks of Athens and Jerusalem as this dialogue between two sources of knowledge, Western philosophy and science, and Judeo-Christian religion. But when Athens and Jerusalem refused to talk to Mecca, refused to take into consideration the legacy of Ibrahim السلام, this is what happens. With Athens, we see the worst of Western philosophy in its absolutism, in its black and white view of the world, which can only find articulation in us versus them. Either you are with us or against us. As we see in Gaza today, as we see in the entire world today. With Jerusalem, the worst of the Jewish ethic that could possibly have been brought out. We see this treatment of Gentiles, of these non-Jewish people as non-humans, really. And that's because both traditions could not repair themselves could not cure themselves of these ailments, of these diseases because they did not take Mecca seriously, because they did not take the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam seriously. It is this legacy that in these days of Hajj, we commemorate, we seek to internalize in our character, in our communities. What we see in this journey of Hajj, when pilgrims don their ihram, and they head towards Mecca, towards the Kaaba, is this reenactment of the life and legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam, the values that he gave us, particularly the value of sacrifice, that center of his life, Tawheed, the way he articulated it, the way he lived it. If this does not become a living reality in the world today, then we're only going to see more chaos, more corruption, more bloodshed. The Qur'an talks about this legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam in so many different places. In Surah Nahl, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن إبراهيم كان أمة قانتا لله حنيفة That Ibrahim alayhi salam was an ummah. That he was a community unto himself. As a single individual, he was so heavy on the scales. He was so significant. His significance was like that of a nation. That was Ibrahim alayhi salam. That was, he was a paragon. That such is his legacy. وَلَمْ يَكُ مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And he was not of those who did shirk. It was this legacy of Tawheed that really Ibrahim alayhi salam mastered. And he gifted to humanity that we are indebted to him for. Shakiran li an'umi. Ibrahim alayhi salam himself was grateful to Allah for all of Allah's blessings upon him. Ijtabahu wa hadahu ila siratin mustaqim. Allah chose him and he guided him to the straight path. We will note that the Quran also uses the same word for the Muslim ummah. Where Allah says, "Who would tabakum? Allah is the one who has chosen all of you. The same word that was used for Ibrahim alayhi salam that we see here. وَآتَيْنَاهُ فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً We blessed him with all the goodness in this world. Part of the dua that we make in or during hajj, this, those, that dua comes in the passage that is talking about hajj in Surah Al-Baqarah. We ask Allah, رَبَّنَا آتِنَا فِي الدُّنْيَا حَسَنَةً 
that Ya Allah, our Rabb, we are asking you for the best of this world. Allah is declaring here that Ibrahim السلام, got the best in this world. When we look at his life in terms of comfort, in terms of luxury, in terms of even popular acceptance, Ibrahim السلام, does not seem to have the best in this world. Rather, he had suffering, he had strife, he had difficulty all across the board, all of which we will talk about. Yet, Allah says he had the best in this world. When we're asking Allah for the best in this world, we need to keep clear in our minds this dimension of what Ibrahim السلام, was granted that was the best in this world. What does that even mean? Until we're able to understand that, until we're able to realign our scales of what it means to be successful, until and unless we do that, we're not going to be able to learn from this legacy of Ibrahim alayhi salam. وَإِنَّهُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ لَمِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And Ibrahim alayhi salam on the day of judgment is going to be among the righteous. This is an honor, not for Ibrahim alayhi salam, but for the salihin, but for the righteous people that Ibrahim alayhi salam is going to be in their Midst. Why should you be righteous? Because you're going to be in the company of Ibrahim alayhi salam. ثم أوحينا إليك أن تتبع ملة إبراهيم حنيفة. Then Allah addresses Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says to the Prophet Muhammad that then we have revealed to you that you follow the way of Ibrahim alayhi salam with devotion, upright. Ibrahim alayhi salam was the role model of Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Who is our role model? Wa ma kana min al mushrikeen. And again, he was not of those who did shirk. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.